Welcome to Gentle Hatha. In our practice for Gentle Hatha, we'll be moving the body mindfully and smoothly while allowing for moments of stillness to integrate these movements. So a little bit of an ebb and flow, kind of a yin and a yang, but more in the realm of a gentle hatha practice. So we'll start lying on our backs. You can take a bolster underneath your spine or a supported fish, supported back bend. So you come up. You can take your eye pillow over top of your forehead. And let your palms come down by your sides, face up. Your feet come together and use wide and butterfly. We're here for the first part of our opening and practice. For this practice, begin to welcome yourself to contemplate the niyama, the second limb, or the inner practices. And the fourth niyama refers to as svadhyaya, S-V-A-D-H-Y-A-Y-A. And Svadhyaya is our own self set. And this can be interpreted however you wish, be it physically, mentally, energetically, emotionally, spiritually. But keeping it pretty simple. I invite you to study and to inquire your own true identity through the course of this practice. Allow the body to feel heavy for the bolster and for your mat to support you, for the floor to hold you sweetly.
take another couple breaths here and just open the back then. Place your hand over your heart or your belly. Take a cleansing inhale from the nose up to the mouth. And then we'll take the sound of OM. Inhale. Staying here for as long as you desire. You can bring your feet to the floor, bending the knees. Remove your eye pillow if you have one on your face off to the side. You can just start to let your legs and your knees windshield wiper side to side. Press up to your seat. We'll take a seated forward fold, sitting up on the chip fold block here. Take the bolster on its highest height to start and crush it in half. Take your legs up in front and then hinge over as you sit to a forward bend for about a minute or so, not super long. up, slide in the feet in, take the bolster off to the side, and come onto your hands and your knees and take your chip foam block off to the side, have your foam blocks near the front of your mat for support. Once you find your way to your hands and your knees, just very gently and slowly, with no rush, breathing naturally through cat and cow, front and back. in your spine.
going from either side, lateral flexion to the left and to the right. start to move a little bit more kind of loosely, freely, almost like you're moving through water. Just letting your body express itself abstract in any direction of movement. The hands and the feet, the spine, the hips and the shoulders. as your mat, bringing your bum to your heels for child's pose, and we'll walk the hands right away. Walk to the left as you rest your right side of your face inside of your bicep for a few breaths into your right side of your rib cage and lung. Deep exhale. Breathe in. And breathe out. Walk the hands over to the right. And take the left hand over the right hand and take your left cheek into your left bicep. Breathe into your left hip. Back to center to your hands and knees. You take your fingers to face your knees and your wrists to face the front of the mat just for a few breaths. shaking out the wrists and fingers. You can find your toe squat for a moment as we bring our bum to the heel. Tuck the toes, all ten toes underneath you. Good. And then from here, lift up through the crown of your head, rolling your shoulders back. your hands down to the floor, lift your feet off the ground, and start to observe the ankles, feet, toes, everything releasing, and tap the tops of the feet up. From there, step your right foot forward to your right thumb, find that triple bone block, place your left knee on top, and tap your blocks beneath your hands for low lunge. Low lunge pose. 
send your hips forward as you lift up through your chest. Push back a little bit through your left toe pads as you sit more into your right thigh. up to hands on the thigh, sitting more into that depth of your leg, lift up through your hips and through your waist. And your next option, you can press down through your left toes and use your hands on blocks to help lift the left knee off the block. And let the right thigh come forward as you reach the arms up towards the ceiling for high crescent lunge. behind your head, lean your head into your hands and reach up more through the crown of your head. Continue keeping that inquiry into your feet as they press down to give your chest and your crown of your head a bit more height. slowly release your hands down to, uh, to the blocks on either side and then from here slowly from there lower your left knee to the ground back onto your block switch your leg out taking your right leg back then take your block beneath your right knee step your left foot between your hands finding low lunge on the second side Push back through your right toes, getting that nice sensation through the right quadricep. Sit more through the base of your hips and lengthen out through the crown of your head. Take your hands onto your left thigh, coming up to halfway, partway lunge. Roll your shoulders a bit further back as you extend up to the crown of the head and lengthen up your tailbone behind you. Big breath into your right thigh. Take your hands on your blocks as you lift your right knee off the ground. If you're coming up higher, walk your hands up your left thigh. You can stay with your hands on your left thigh or bring your arms out wider and maybe further up towards the ceiling into a high crescent lunge on the second side.
Again, if you want to take your hands behind your head, go ahead. Or you might want to take your hands on your low back with the fingers pointing down, leaning the heels of the wrists into the, that low back. And then lengthen your sternum forward and up, but send your tailbone further back. Lift up a bit higher. And then exhale, slowly release back down to your blocks. But set your right foot to your left foot this time at the front of the mat. Take your chip foam block off to the side, and from there, bend your knees. Then trim your hips and find Uttanasana forward fold. Walk your block off towards your left so you are asymmetrical. Bend your left knee, straighten your right leg, and take your right hand and your right hip. Good. From there, start to turn your chest over towards the right. Find a little twist underneath your left waist. And you can reach your right arm up towards the ceiling if you like. Slowly release, and then switching sides, walk your blocks off to the right, bend into your right knee, plant your right hand on the block, take your left hand on your left hip and turn your chest over towards the left, and reach your left arm up if you like. left hand down. Come on back to center and find a halfway lift with your hands on your blocks. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, keep reaching forward as you fold forward and down. Then we'll start to bend the knees, roll ourselves up one vertebra at a time with standing. space forward. And just begin to find that svadhyaya, that study in your stillness. Feeling the weight of your energy equally planting through each foot. The big toe, the baby toe, circle of each heel, and then feeling a slight Lying or tugging, suction cupping of your feet on your mat. From there, we'll take a few roll ups and roll downs, half sun salutations. Inhale, reach the arms out and up overhead. Exhale, bring the palms in the heart center, bring your chin into your throat as you roll yourself forward and down towards the ground. Place your hands on your shins as you lift halfway. And fold forward. Lengthen your tailbone down, firm your belly, coming up one vertebra at a time. Reaching the arms out and up, overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Rolling down, vertebra on vertebra. Inhale, find your halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Press down through your feet, engage your legs, roll up. Reach 
Release your hands wide and up overhead once more here. Exhale, bring your hands down and be in the front center. From there, bring your elbows in. We're going to find a little bit of movement in the shoulder girdle here. Product back. So it's feeling that lift of our pelvic floor, firming your belly. Push your palms together, squeeze the elbows in, reach the arms all the way up overhead. When the elbows start to separate, take them wide and take the tops of your hands together. Reach up overhead, look up at your thumbs. Exhale, push your palms out wide to shoulder height, and then take your palms out and behind you and interlace your hands as you reach the arms down and lift your chest up. Separate, touch the tops of the hands together, flex the palms out wide, spread. Interlace your hands behind your back, lift your chest. And exhale, now find a rounded standing cat position. And then reach the arms up overhead for forward Vahasasana, upward hand pose. Exhale, hands down the heart center. From here, go ahead and shift your weight into your right foot, into the middle of the mat. Take a gentle step back, a little bit wide, and settling into warrior two. Bring your arms out in line with your shoulders for warrior two. Not going to do a long sequence or flow here. We're just going to stick into warrior into warrior two for five, four. Sit more into your right thigh, letting your right knee come out a little bit, hugging through the inner leg lines, bones, into the hips. One more breath here in your warrior two. Good. Take your right palm up towards the ceiling for exalted warrior. You can take the bend out of the right knee a bit if you like for exalted triangle. Take your right hand behind your head, turn your right elbow back, lean your head back and lift up through that nice opening across the shoulders, the right upper armpit air region. Inhale, come back into your arms on up your shoulders. Walk your left foot in a little bit. <clears throat> and then come forward into mountain pose, Tadasana, the front of the mat. Inhaling. And exhaling. Shift your weight now into your left foot. Step your right foot back into warrior two position. At the left heel, roughly in line with the back middle arch, or sometimes heels can be um, in line with each other. So find what works best for your body. Gather your shoulder blades on your back and extend up through your fingertips. Sit more through your left thigh as you take your left hip back and your right foot slightly forward. And then keep that as you push away through the back edge of the foot. And then sit more to your left thigh. Breathe in. And out. A couple 
more breaths here. Continue drawing into your pelvic floor, firming through your belly. We'll turn the palms up now, reach the left arm forward and up to the ceiling. Take the right hand behind on the thigh, <clears throat> or the calf. And take the left hand behind the head. Turn your chest forward, lift up and breathe. Slowly transition back into warrior two position. Extending your left leg a bit, heel toe your right foot in and up until you can step it all the way forward into mountain pose at the front of your mat. Breathe in. Breathe out. And from there, bring your legs together. Feel the inseam of your thighs touching, the big toes touching. Take your left arm down by your left side, and then from there, reach your right arm out, up, and over towards the left for a standing side bend, drawing your right shoulder onto your back and extending up through your right fingertips. Inhale, come back to center, reach the right arm down to your right hip, and then reach the left arm up, over, towards the right. Keep your shoulder supporting, firming your belly, wrapping your ribs in, and feel that lengthening up through your left foot, hip, waist, shoulder, fingers. Inhale, we'll come back to center and interlace your hands behind your back as you lift your chest forward and let your shoulders roll back and down. Lift into a bit of a back bend. And sigh it out. Shift your weight now into your feet equally and take your hands on your outer hips. Have your elbows out a little bit wider and shift your weight into your left foot and place your right foot inside of your left ankle calf region for tree pose. You can come up higher if you like, if you have your balance. Keep pressing the right foot against the left calf and reach your arms out to T-shape so your shoulders are roughly lined. And then you can start to take your elbows bent into cactus shape. Good, if you want to reach the arms up overhead, go ahead, or maybe take your hands behind your head, reaching the elbows forward in and up for a little bit more of a back bend in your tree. And maybe lift up and over towards your left at the same time as you find the side bend, standing balance, while also having your hands bound behind your skull. And you can always come out listening for those cues of self-increase svadhyaya. Self-practice. Inhale to come up and to release your roots. And 
shifting your weight now into your right foot, and placing your left foot inside of the right ankle, calf region. You don't force your weight into anything in your life, especially yoga practices, asana and non-asana related. Bring your elbows up to shoulder height, T-shape or cactus shape if you want to go right into it for the second side, go for it. Your palms face forward. Find that tipping point, pressing down through the bright big toe, pinky toe, and the circle of the right heel. Really feel that lift through the arches. Bring the elbows in and up to the ceiling, lengthening through your triceps. Lift up, and maybe find that side bend over towards the right as well. Release your left foot down, release your arms down. And then come back to the front of the mat if you're in the middle. And we'll reach the arms all the way up overhead. Exhale, sit back into Utkatasana, chair position, chair pose. We'll be here for just a few breaths as the transition to our forward fold. spine as you come into Uttanasana. Take your peace fingers around your big toes and your thumbs beneath your peace fingers of Padam Uttanasana. Bend your elbows wide, send your hips back and up as your chest tips forward and down to your thighs, bend the knees. Place your hands behind your backs once more, reach the arms behind and up. Release your hands down your legs. Walk your feet back into downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana, reaching your hips back and your, let your head be nice and heavy. Make your way down to your hands and your knees. And take your knees wide, your big toes together again. For now, child's pose with a chip foam block between your bum and your heels and a bolster from underneath your torso in between your thighs. So coming into a modified, more restorative child's position here. Let your palms and your arms rest whatever angle they need to be at. You need to be here just for about a minute or so. Inhaling. And exhale. Walk your hands back. Good. And then from there, you can keep your chip foam block between your bum and your heels, staying on your shins. Good. 
From there, take your hands behind your low back, coming into a modified version of Camel Pose Ustrasana. Bring your shoulders back and get together. Push out to the tops of your feet and lift your sternum forward and up into a bit of an extension and lean yourself slightly back as well. Keep looking up to the ceiling, opening up the front of your throat, looking out through your gaze. So release the posture, slowly rounding yourself in. Nice shin, kneeling on your shins into a rounded shape. up. Take your right hand onto your left shin or thigh. Take your left fingertips behind you or use your block for a bit of support. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, revolve and twist around to your left side. Inhale. And exhale. Do that again. Good. Take your left hand on your left thigh. Take your right hand behind you. Cap your twist to your right. center, reach your arms up, exhale, rounding forward, inhale, take your hands on your thighs, halfway lift, exhale, round, from there, take your left hand on your right thigh, and take your right finger just behind you, inhale, lift, Exhale, rotate around to the right. Inhale. Twist. Once more. Inhale to center, take your right hand to your right thigh, take your left hand back, open twist to your left. Inhale to center. Reach the arms up. Exhale, round your spine. Hands to your thighs, inhale, extension. Exhale, tip over to your left hip or right hip and take your legs up. Let your legs come wide. Give them a little release here. Tapping out through the calves and the ankles, hamstrings. your bolster underneath your knees. Have your firm foam blocks closer to you on your right side with your chip foam block as we make our way down to our forearms, to our backs. Let your knees 
come towards your chest. And then take your left leg straight out in front as you hug your right knee in towards your chest. Lift your hips up to the right as you take your right arm into cactus shape and exhale, tip your right leg across the left side, coming into a one knee recline twist. Bend your left knee so your left shin can be supported on your bolster. And breathing into your belly, into your spine. Inhale to center, neutralize your hips, hug your knees into your chest, bend your right leg out in front of you, pick up your hips to the left and hug your left knee in, placing the right hand now on top of the left thigh. You can bend your right knee and take your right shin onto your bolster and exhale, turn your left knee over to the right. Maneuvering as you need to, and then settling into stillness for a few breaths for the twist. your knees back into center, inhale, neutralize your hips and pelvis on your mat, nice deep rounded spine, place your feet down, drag that bolster up underneath you to your sacrum for support and bridge for a couple breaths before we take the Gurita Karani, legs to sky. Inhale. And exhale. Gather the knees in. Before we take deep breath at Karani, find a thread the needle position, figure four with the hips lifted on the bolster. It's a few breaths here. Carefully switching, taking the left outer edge of the foot on the right thigh above the knee, interlacing your hands around your shin or behind around the hamstring, and breathe. your right leg and then your left leg up and then both arms arriving into Vikarita Karani, our last position before we take Shavasana.
begin to roll the wrists and the ankles around, moving any fingers and toes, releasing any further energy that might be cooped up. And then let your knees come in towards your chest. Circle the knees out and in a few times. Go in the opposite direction. And then lower down your feet. Lift up your hips. Turn the bolster on its edge as it hatches up beneath your knees for a little shavasana. You take your chip bone block beneath your skull as well here, and your eye pillow over your forehead above, if you would like to use your eye pillow. Take one more full breath in. Sag it out. and to study your energy and your prana moving through your body. The breath traveling in your nose. And out your mouth. Wiggling now through the hands and the feet as a whole. Reaching the arms up overhead, pointing the toes. Bending the knees now, please. 
place your feet onto the bolster or the floor. And you roll over to your left side in fetal position. Pressing down to your right palm, coming up to a brief seated position. Placing the left hand over the heart, right hand over to the belly. Beginning to thank yourself for tuning inward and Inquiring about what is happening maybe in your life, the way it shows up on your mat and how it comes with you off of your mat as well. Svadhyaya, self-study. Inhale for all. Thank you so much for practicing gentle hatha. Namaste.